last time on Who Wants to Be a Millionaire? Got it for 32000 I believe Buffalo Bill was a member of the Texas Rangers. No, he was a member of the Pony Express. I'm trying to think who I want to call. Need a TV fan. Uh, Five three. seconds. Survivors, your guess is as good as mine. Okay. I don't know, they said everybody was watching. What happened? I guess he found two people that aren't. <laughs> oh, no, it's Rotana. Oh. Oh. You got it right, Chandelier. 300. Now, join us from New York for Who Wants to Be a Millionaire? Thank you very much. Hello again, everybody, and welcome to Tuesday Night at Who Wants to Be a Millionaire. Now, can you believe it? It's been a year since we first went on the air, and look what's happening around here. Just take a look at this latest issue of Talk Magazine and who's doing fashion spreads on our set. Heidi Klum, supermodel Heidi Klum, dressed like all of our contestants on the show. <laughs> I wish. And here I am, an international supermodel I am, and look at those models and how they can't take their eyes off me. I wish. And now we're back to reality and our current contestant, Phil Gibbons from Santa Monica, California. Phil, nice to have you back. Nice to be here. Phil, originally from uh, the New York area. Correct. Moved out to California when? About 12 years ago, 1988. So you're back in New York, and mm -hmm. how does it feel? Feels great. Back, uh, wonderful to be back, and certainly under these circumstances, having a great time. You had a night uh, on the town last night. Correct. Went out with um, your dad, who's sitting right behind you over mm -hmm. there. Nice to see you, Bill. Nice and your Uncle here. John. That's right, right here. Three Irish faces looking at us right here. <laughs> and where did you go? Uh, we went to an Irish pub. Well, of course. <laughs> of course you went to an Irish pub. What do you do for a living? Uh, I'm a, a business development person for an internet company. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, you're single? Uh, yes, I am. Never married? Never been married, no. Not even looking? <laughs> well, I'm always looking. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, good luck to you now. You know, you've won 300, Phil, and you're 12 questions away from winning that big $1 million uh, jackpot. You know how we play. The more questions you get right, the more money you win. Once you reach the $1,000 or the $32,000 level, you're guaranteed to leave you with at least that much money. You have all three of your lifelines ready to help you out. 50-50, ask the audience, and you can phone a friend as well. If you want to play along with Phil, go to the ABC.com and join thousands of others at home using ABC's Enhanced TV. And do that right now. You'll have a good time. Okay, Phil, shall we go, go at it? Absolutely. All right. Audience, you ready? Yes, let's go. Let's play Who Wants to Be a Millionaire. Here we are. Okay, Phil, for $500, here it comes. Which of the following liquids would be correctly described as potable? Rubbing alcohol, gasoline, shampoo, ginger ale. Uh, I'm going to go with D, ginger ale, Regis. Right, for $500. For a thousand. Which British queen has the famous nickname Bloody? Queen Anne. Queen Mary the First, Queen Victoria, Queen Elizabeth the First. Uh, I'm going to go with uh, B, Regis, Queen Mary the First. Got it for a thousand dollars. Okay, we keep going here. This is for two thousand. Here it is. The razor is the name for a type of popular new what? Scooter. Palm-sized computer, bicycle, athletic shoe. You know, Regis, I want to use a lifeline. Sure. I want to ask the audience. Audience, we need some help here for Phil. On your keypads, using A, B, C, or D, please vote now. Fifty-one percent say it's a uh, scooter, new scooter. Well, that's um, it's a pretty significant margin, and uh, this isn't the most complicated question. So I think uh, I'll go with the audience, and I'll say scooter A is my final answer. Thank you, audience. He just won two thousand dollars.
All right, nine away from a million, 4,000. Take a look. 19th century stage lighting methods included the flame heating of what chemical compound to spotlight actors? Carbonic oxide, lime, potash, boric acid. We're looking for a chemical compound. Um, maybe, you know, I don't, I don't really know though, so maybe we better use the 50-50. You want to narrow it down by two? Let's do Why that. Why don't we do that? Yeah. All right, fine. That uh, will help you a little bit. Computer, take away two of those wrong answers, leaving you just one wrong answer and the correct one. Oh, it just, it just came to me there. Yeah. What came to you? The limelight. You're in the limelight. So You're I'm a gonna... genius, <laughs> Phil. This could be a breakthrough. Um, I'm gonna go with uh, I'm gonna go with B is my final answer. You're gonna say lime. You're right. Four thousand dollars. You've got it. Eight away from a million. Going for eight thousand dollars. Take a look. What actor made his motion picture debut as the star of the 1970 movie Hercules in New York? Robert Duvall, Nick Nolte, Robert De Niro, Arnold Schwarzenegger. I'm thinking it's the perfect title for Arnold Schwarzenegger, but... Um, or is that a trick? Yeah, exactly. It's, we better use that, uh, we better use that lifeline. And I'm, I'm gonna go with, uh, I think I'm gonna go with uh, Chris Heath. What does Chris, uh, Chris do? Uh, he works, also works for an internet company. Aha, uh -huh. movie loves, fan. Big movie fan. All right, let's see how good he is. Okay. All right, our friends at AT&T will find Chris and bring him to us. This is Chris. Chris, Regis Philbin here from ABC's Who Wants to Be a Millionaire. How are you, Regis? Fine, how you doing? Good. Chris, I, we need a movie fan, and Phil tells me you're a movie fan. Okay, and that's he can right. Use, he can use your expertise right now, so he's going to come on and read you the question that's uh, stumping him right now, and the four answers, and one of them's the right answer, okay? Hey. All right, good. It's all yours, Phil. 30 seconds, and they start now. What actor made his motion picture debut as the star of the 1970 movie Hercules in New York? Was it Robert Duvall, Nick Nolte, Robert De Niro, Arnold Schwarzenegger? Uh, the answer is uh, D, Arnold Schwarzenegger. Okay, Heater. I knew, you, I knew I could depend on you. That's it, buddy. 100%. All right. Very good. We'll talk right, to you bye soon. Bye. Take care. Bye. All right. Well, that was your first impression anyway, wasn't it? Yeah, but, you, you know, unless you're positive, I don't want yeah, to Yeah, it cost you a lifeline, but let's, let's see if you're positive. Uh, I'm going with the heater. It's uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger D. That's my final answer. He did, did it. Oh. Got it right. Arnold Schwarzenegger. California in the hot seat right now. It took every lifeline you got, but you won eight thousand dollars, didn't you? Oh, that's true. So sixteen thousand was seven away from a million. Mm -hmm. I think you're doing fine. Let's get back to it. Let's play. Who wants to be a millionaire? Here we go. Sixteen thousand dollars. What musician sings the theme song for the TV series Dawson's Creek? Tori Amos. Paula Cole, Sarah McLaughlin, Alanis Morissette. <laughs> You're killing me here, Regis. Um, you don't watch Dawson's Creek? No, I don't. What's the matter with you? I don't. It's fun. You know, I think I'm just going to take a stab at it, Regis. I'm going to say Paula Cole, me. Why? Because the other three are fairly famous and Paula Cole I haven't really heard of, and maybe she'd be doing a theme song for a TV series. Okay, not a bad reason. You want to make that your final answer? Final answer. He actually got it right for $16,000. Oh, I thought, uh, I thought that smiling Irish face would be gone by now, but you got it right. Good for you, Phil. This is tough. Well, maybe the, maybe the last six will be a little easier than the uh, It can't be, it can't be any six. tougher. Wow. 
All right, you won 16,000. You miss here, you'll lose 15 grand, but we're going for $32,000. Here it comes. The annual Pulitzer Prize Awards are bestowed by what university? Harvard, Yale, Columbia, Northwestern. You know, uh, Regis, I'm, I'm pretty confident that the answer is uh, C, Columbia. And I'm going to make C, Columbia my final answer. Just did it again for 32. All right, so now we're going out to 64,000, but uh, you know, and even if you don't know it, you'll make a guess here, you're not gonna lose anything. Five away from a million, let's take a look at it for 64,000. Which of these is not a novel by trend-watching author Douglas Copeland? Generation X, Shampoo Planet, Micro Surfs, High Fidelity. I know Generation X is by Douglas Copeland. Uh, I think he followed it up with Shampoo Planet. He's just sort of an offbeat sort of character, and, and the the, um, <laughs> the only really kind of normal sounding title is D, High Fidelity. <laughs> so I'm going to go with D, High Fidelity. Lucky so far. Final answer? I'll say final answer D. Gosh, you got it for sixty-four thousand dollars! Incredible! We'll be right back. He's going for one hundred and twenty-five thousand. We can't stop him. Phil Gibbons. Santa Monica, California, the luck of the Irish, or whatever it is. Anyway, he's up to the 64,000 that he's won and going for 125,000. It's getting very exciting. It really is. What would you, we're getting into some serious money as well, uh, Phil. What, what are you going to do with your money? Well, actually, uh, my dad's still driving around a 72 convertible and uh, a car that he used to take me to high school in, so I figured it might be time for a new car. What do you think? Is That's it why I'm here to make sure he does it? <laughs> <laughs> a 72 convertible. How's it running? Real good. Yeah, it's got about 300,000 miles on it. Original engine. It's good for another 30,000. No, that's think? what I think. Yeah. yeah. All right, we're back at the board now. You're doing just great. You're hanging in there wonderfully. You, you've won 64,000. We're looking at a question for 125,000. Let's play. In 1997, the National Organization Students Again Drunk Driving change the last two words of its name to what? Discrimination and denial, drugs and drinking, danger and delinquency, destructive decisions. Don't know it off the top of my head. Well, let's take another look at it. Do you think it would be discrimination and denial, drugs and drinking, danger and delinquency? destructive decisions. I don't think it's discrimination and denial that, that's sort of getting away from the function of the organization. Juvenile delinquency is kind of an archaic term. Um, it's between drugs and drinking and destructive decisions. And I also got to think since I'm guessing here, you know, I'm, I'm risking $32,000. I think if, if you're sitting here, you really got to take a shot, especially if, if I think I've limited it down. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say I think it's, uh, it's D, destructive decisions. Really? Mm hmm Well, you've been very lucky so far. Yeah. Mm hmm Want to make it your final answer? My final answer, yeah. Wow. He got it right again. <laughs> Lifelines were gone at eight thousand dollars, and now he's going for two hundred and fifty thousand. Luck of the Irish. Wish you were playing for Notre Dame this year. Here it is. <laughs> we're three away from a million. For a quarter million, here it comes. 
Which country encompasses all of Asia Minor? Turkey, Indonesia, Iran, Ukraine. I'm gonna think about this because something jumps out at me and I probably shouldn't do this, but I will say, it's not Indonesia, it's not Ukraine, it's not Iran. I guess that leaves Turkey. That leaves Turkey. How did I forget that? Well, now, just to remind you, you right. know, 93,000 if you miss, but a quarter million if you get it. You know, I'm, I'm going to go with Turkey, A, eh? and I'm going to make that my final answer. Yes, it's Turkey! Cow, now we're two away from a million. What do you think? Starting to throw some serious coin around here. Yeah, right? absolutely. If you miss now, you lose two hundred and eighteen thousand. I, I, you know, I just want you to know where you. But this is one of the greatest comebacks we've ever had on the show. Yeah, I did not expect nothing. You less. were sweating up two hundred dollar question a few minutes ago, <laughs> and now you're going for a half million bucks. Shall we do it? I'd be better. Here it comes for five hundred thousand. What Russian prime minister was deposed by the Bolsheviks? in October 1917. Lov Kornilov. Alexander Koryansky. Leon Trotsky. Nikolai Bulgan. Um, you know, it's funny, but I have an incredible interest in Imperial Russian history. And um, I know that Leon Trotsky was a Bolshevik. Nikolai Bulganin was, uh, I think, a Soviet uh, communist in the 50s. Kornilov I've never heard of, and um, I know that Alexander Kerensky was the prime minister of the provisional government and was deposed by the Bolsheviks in 1917. In other words, you're telling us you know the answer. I think so. So there's no problem, no sweat. What are we worried about? I think we're going to go with um, B. Alexander Kerensky, my final answer. <laughs> you got it! Perhaps <laughs> Take a look at it. <laughs> Half a million dollars right there. What do you think? How does it feel? Oh, no. Feels good. <laughs> this has been the greatest comeback in the history of the Millionaire Show. I mean, the man was wiped out of lifelines at $8,000. Hercules in New York. We called the heater. The heater came through for us. But then you went to 16000 This is a guy who doesn't know about Dawson's Creek, but knows about Russian imperialism. You know what's going to happen here if you win the million dollars? Not only does your old man get a new car, your uncle gets one, too. Hey, yeah. <laughs> oh, the uncle likes that. Yeah. The uncle likes that a lot. You guys excited over there? Oh, boy. Oh, yeah. They, they're pulling for you. They're yeah, right behind you. Yeah, yeah. All right. So you're feeling pretty good now? Yeah. Boy, it's, been, it's really been an incredible run. Terribly exciting. Everybody in the studio is pulling for you. Mm -hmm. And whether you win or lose, I'm going to miss that smiling Irish face. It's Thank nice. you so much. Nice looking at you. All right. Ready? One away from a million, and here it comes right now. Let's play. In the U.S., the Sony Walkman personal cassette player was originally marketed in 1979 under what name? Was it Soundabout? Listener? Eardrummer? Stowaway? <sighs> 21 years ago. You know, Regis, I, I have to say, I, I couldn't even begin to guess. Just think for a minute. You know, when they first came out, everybody was talking about them. Everybody was interested, carrying one around. Let's see. How old were you? 23? Something like that. You probably <laughs> had one. I know your Uncle John had one. <laughs> but it does mean 468,000 if you lose. 
well, I could start with some logic, and the first logic would be, um, frankly, the first logic would be stowaway. But I have to read this. I have to be honest. I'm just, I don't know it, and I wouldn't do this unless I was 100% sure. So we, we certainly understand yeah. that. It's been a wonderful ride. Right. My gosh, you won a half million dollars. You came up from nowhere. And it was just a thrill to be here and watch you go on like that. Right. It was a thrill to be here as well. I take it you're going to take a walk then, huh? I guess I am, yes. And why don't you take a guess while you're here? I'll just go with stowaway, something about that. Stowaway. No, it was sound about. But look, here's a half hey. million dollars. What are we talking about here? There you go. It's great having you, Phil. Good luck to you, okay? Take a look at it. Irish eyes are smiling, and not only backstage, but all over this country. And there's a dad who's finally going to be paid back for driving his son to school every day all those years ago. Half a million dollars. Good for them. We'll be right back in a moment. Don't go away now. Well, I think we're all still getting over what happened here. I think a certain Irish pub might be doing a lot of business in New York City tonight. All right, right now we've got 10 new contestants who called our 800 number, wound up right here. Who are they tonight? Let's find out. And they are... Brandon Mullen, Teeny, Washington, Paul Rufo, Orlando, Florida, David Weed, Topeka, Kansas, Stephen Klein, Zionsville, Pennsylvania, Josh Karen, Old Town, Maine, Greg Sheffield, Fort Myers, Florida, Rich Mercury, Martinez, California. Dennis Katzmerich, Annandale, Virginia. Frank Tangridi, West Babylon, New York, and Larry Pachinski, Honolulu, Hawaii. All right, everybody ready? Audience, we need complete silence here for this question. Thank you very much. Here's tonight's first fastest finger question. With these famous Republicans in order of their birth, starting with the most recent. Abraham Lincoln, Dan Quayle, Barry Goldwater, Calvin Coolidge. Okay, everybody, time's up. Let's see the answer in the correct order, starting with the most recent Republican, Dan Quayle. And then Barry Goldwater, Calvin Coolidge, finally Abraham Lincoln. Let's see you got it right in the fastest time. And the winner is... Brandon... <laughs> Let's play up here. Brandon Moen from uh, Cheney. Cheney. Cheney, Washington. Nice to have you here, Brandon. He's 21 years old, still in college. Attends the University of Eastern Washington. Yep. Right. Nice to have you here. What do you study? Urban and regional planning. Aha. Uh -huh. And you got a, a friend with you? Yes, I brought my girlfriend, Francesca. Francesca Salomone. Huh? Salomone. Salomone, yeah. Nice to see you, Francesca. Thank She's you. cute, Brandon. <laughs> and so are you. Oh. <laughs> and I love your shirt and tie. But anyway, so how long have you been dating? Uh, a year. A year last week. And what are you studying? I'm an education major. Uh huh. All right, well, look, it's, we're glad to have you here. We just had an exciting moment. What, what are you thinking about when you're there and you watch a guy go all the way up the scale? They're almost to, well, actually to a million dollars. Yeah, it was exciting. Was it? We got to meet him earlier. He's a real nice guy. Yeah, just nice happy guy. for him. All right, well, let's get going. Let's see what you can do, okay, Brandon? You know about the rules. So you know about the lifelines. 50-50, ask the audience, phone a friend. So if you're ready, Brandon, let's play Who Wants to Be a Millionaire? $100. While reciting the Pledge of Allegiance, you traditionally place your hand on what body part? Head, heart, knee, left toe. <laughs> well, you, you place your hand on your heart beat. Yeah, that's where you put it, right on your heart. $200. Ambulance chaser is a derogatory term for an opportunistic member of what profession? Law, medicine, Finance, 
Library Science. A law. Yeah, that's what they uh, call them. <laughs> Looking at the $300 question right now, according to the title of a folk song, who lies over the ocean? Is it my body? My Betty? My buddy? My Sharona? Nothing's jumping out at me right now. Um, I hate to do this, but I'm going to use the audience. Got to stay in the in the game, of course. All right, audience, we need some help here for Brandon. On your keypads, using A, B, C, or D, please vote now. Brandon, 91% have heard of this song, except you. <laughs> What do you think oh, now? Gosh, well, I guess something should have jumped out at me. Um, well, I, I think I can trust this audience of 91%. Uh, we'll go with A, my Bonnie. Final. My Bonnie lies over the ocean. That was it. You got it. $300. $500. Bucks. If you are driving in the Motor City, where are you, Brandon? Chicago, Los Angeles, Detroit. Indianapolis. That would be C, Detroit. Detroit, the Motor City, you got it. For a thousand dollars, take a look. By definition, what is planted on land that is lying fallow? Flowers, rice, wheat, nothing. I want to say nothing, but I still want to keep playing too though. Uh... Nothing was your first impression? Right. Let's go with D, nothing. Final? Yes. Yes, Brandon, follow nothing, you got it. Sometimes when you have to lose, use a lifeline early in the game, it kind of shakes your confidence. Mm -hmm. But you know, uh, maybe it was just an area that you didn't cover, so don't worry about that. Now you got to $1,000. We're 10 away from the million. We're going for $2,000, and you still have two lifelines left. Here it comes for two grand. In May 2000, a computer email virus originating in the Philippines had what subject line? I love you. Free money. You're great. Good news. I remember this. I, I believe it was the, the love bug or something like that. So I'm confident that it's A, I love you. Final. Yes. Yes, Brandon. See that? $2,000. Now it's $4,000. What athlete created a maneuver called the Robodope? Greg Luganus. Muhammad Ali, Olga Colbert, Sonny Liston. Rope-a-dope. Boy. The bad thing is, only two of those athletes I ring a bell. So, who are they? It's not good. Uh, Luganus and Muhammad Ali. The other two, I, I probably know if I you know, sport, but for the life of me, I can't think of. Let's use the 50-50. All right, computer, please take away two of those wrong answers, leaving one wrong answer and the correct one. <clears throat> Muhammad Ali and Sonny Liston. Um, I'm just going to go for it. I don't want to waste that last lifeline. Be Muhammad Ali. Final? Yes. Muhammad Ali, the right answer, the old rope dope maneuver. All right, so you won 4,000. We're going for 8,000. Here it comes, Brandon. What mountain range runs along the borders of Tennessee and North Carolina? Great Smoky Mountains, Ozark Mountains, Catskill Mountains, White Mountains. Gosh, I should know this. Confidence, Brandon. Confidence! I think I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna save my lifeline. Let's make some more money. Where do you want to go? Let's go A, A, Great Smoky Mountains. Brandon, final answer? Yes. Brandon, 
the right answer. $8,000. He's going for $16,000 when we come back. Owen, Jeannie Washington, college student, 21 years old in the hot seat right now. Sort of struggling, but look, let me tell you something. You're doing better than your previous contestant. Uh, he uh, didn't have any lifelines left at this point. Now you still got that photo friend. Now, as I understand it from what I read about you, you believe in hypnotism. You were once hypnotized. Yes. Uh... <laughs> you did things that you didn't know you were doing. Yes. Brandon, look at my eyes. <laughs> You're going to go at least to 32,000. Brandon, listen to me. 32,000. You will do it. Okay? Okay. <laughs> Seven away from a million. 16,000 coming up. Let's play. <laughs> the pop song, Graduation, Friends Forever, played at many commencements in 2000, is sung by whom? Mandy Moore, Eminem, Alea, vitamin C. Okay, if I miss this, I'm gonna be in so much trouble. This Francesca loves this song. Brandon, look in my eyes. Yeah. <laughs> Go I ahead. Could, I could sing it to you, but I don't know. I'm not totally positive. Who sang it? I think it's vitamin C. D, vitamin C. Final? Yes. Yes! Vitamin C. Confidence, Brandon. Can you hum a little bit for us? Oh, not now. I'm too All right, nervous. I, I don't play. Forget it. All right, Brandon. 32,000. 32,000. Here it comes. Here it is. The 1844 novel by Dumas. Which of the following is not one of the three musketeers? Aramis, Porthos, Athos, D'Artagnan. Remember any of the names of the three musketeers? It's been a long time since I've been associated with that. Um, but I have the perfect lifeline, I think. Great, good, wonderful. He is an English professor at Eastern Washington University. This is a luck. Yeah, I What's hope. What's his name? Uh, Dana. Dana, all right, fine. Our friends at AT&T will get Dana. He's up at Eastern Washington University. Yep. See if he can help us. Hello. Professor? Uh, Regis? Yes, yes. And Regis a happy Melvin. afternoon. Uh, same to you. I'm here in New York City, and you're out there in Washington. Yes, sir. I've got one of uh, the students of your university here. He needs a little help. I'm the man. All right. Well, that's good. That's what he says, too. Uh, he's going for $32,000 right now. It's very important that he gets it. So uh, he's going to read you the question, the four possible answers, and one of them is the right answer. Okay? Yes, sir. Okay, Dana. Good luck. Good luck to you, Brandon. 30 seconds starts now. In the 1844 novel by Dumas, which of the following is not one of the three musketeers? Aramis, Porthos, Athos, or D'Artagnan? D'Artagnan. D'Artagnan, excuse me. Let's hear him again. Aramis, Porthos, Athos, D'Artagnan. How do you spell the third one? Oh, I got four seconds. Any idea? Hey, uh, uh, C. It's a gap. <laughs> Look in my eyes. You're going to get it. <laughs> Although, should you miss, you'll lose $15,000 to go that... with $1,000. <laughs> I'm out of the I'm out of the hypnotizing <laughs> business. No, I'm... Love to see you get there, but... Uh... I am going to have to... Yes, Brent. I just can't get myself to say it. Uh, you just don't want to leave the table, do you? I don't, but 
you know, it's right there. One more question and I could guess at 64 to get 64. So it's really tempting, but. But if you don't know, if you really don't know it, have no idea. Yeah. But is it worth 15,000? Like, yes, no, I don't think it is. I am going to walk away. Okay, final decision, you're going yes. to walk away now. Do what do you think it would have been? I would probably guess C, just because that's what he guessed. No, see, you would have been wrong. You would have been wrong. D'Artagnan. It was D'Artagnan. Oh, wow. So you leave with 16,000 bucks, which is pretty good, right? Good luck, pal. Oh, yeah, the three musketeers. Well, D'Artagnan is often referred to as the fourth musketeer. But the original three were Athos, Porthos, and Aramis. We still have, though, nine more musketeers ready to cross swords. So here's the next fastest finger question. Put these snacks in the order they were first introduced to the public, starting with the earliest. Ritz Bits sandwiches, Twinkies, Fig Newtons, Kellogg's Pop Tarts. All right, the time is up. Let's see that answer in the correct order, starting with the earliest. And it was Fig Newtons, and then came Twinkies, then Kellogg's Pop-Tarts, and finally Ritz Bits Sandwiches. Who got it right in the fastest time? The winner is Frank Tangretti. Frank, Frank, look at me. You okay? Food questions. I knew this would come in handy someday. Yeah. <laughs> All these years eating and eating, and it finally paid off, Frank. You're here. Oh, God, yes. Congratulations. Okay, Frank, we're going to be a little pressed for time here, but you know the rules, you know the lifelines, right? So if you're ready, shall we do it? Let's play okay. Who Wants to Be a Millionaire. Here we go. All right, Frank, for $100, according to a common phrase, someone who has joined a popular cause or opinion has climbed on the what? Soapbox, bandwagon, motorboat, jungle gym. Uh, that would be the bandwagon. Bandwagon it is for $100. $200, Frank. What does the D stand for in 3D? Decibels, dimensional, dots, dweebs. Uh, B, dimensional. 3D, in dimension. You're right, dimensional. <laughs> now we're up to $300. Which of these is a nickname for a girl that likes to participate in traditionally male activities? Tomboy, Teddy Boy, Danny Boy, Bruce. <laughs> <laughs> I like that one, but it's uh, a tomboy. Yes, tomboy, that's what they call her. $500. What type of animal is Snuggle, the mascot for Snuggle Fabric Softener? Puppy, duck, bear, rabbit. And he's very cute. C, Snuggle the bear. Yes, it's a bear, you're right, Frank, but for you. For $1,000, here it is. Which of the following would properly be classified as flora? Eagle, dandelion, filly, infant. Flora is plant life, so it's B, dandelion. Yes, it's dandelion, you want $1,000. Keep going here. Up to two thousand dollars. Check it out. What is the name of a device used to separate components? Check it out. What is the name of a device used to separate components of a mixture by spinning them rapidly? Edger, desiccator, it's of a mixture by spinning them rapidly. Edger, desiccator, vortex, centrifuge. D, centrifuge. Final answer. Final answer. Yes, sir. Centrifuge, $2,000. Good for you. 
Okay, that sound means that we're out of time for tonight, but Frank will be back here on Thursday night, and joining him will be 10 new contestants who have flown in from all over the country. And they are Tony D'Arazio, Nick Meyer, Jed French, Carla Gorell, Dick Glasser, Larry Alden, Mike Polazar, Mike Boris, and Steve Hegarty. Dharma and Greg next on ABC, so don't go anywhere. Congratulations to Phil Gibbons, and his father just told him he wants a roll. Why not? We'll see you back here with Frank on Thursday night at a special time, 8, 7 Central. From New York, everybody, good night. <laughs>